Hello, everyone. Welcome in. My name is Bryce Kuhn. We're back here on the crowded booth another Monday night as we talk college football, which 2024 coaches are going to be set up for success and which ones maybe weren't the best hire. Uh, Bill O'Brien, we're looking at you. We're also going to talk, obviously, later on in the show about what's going on in Georgia. All in tonight's episode. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like it. Ralph and Will are joining us right here on the crowded booth. How in here and make yourself feel at home. Coming on the crowded booth with Bryce Coon. Welcome in, welcome all. My name's Bryce Coon. Will Manis, Ralph Leary, three inches away from his camera. How you doing, Ralph? You doing well? I mean, I got uh, talk to the hand. Away, talk to the hand, away, baby. Mm. Arm links away. Mine's all the way across the room. Sorry, we don't have the cool setups like you do. Hmm. I don't get paid enough to have cool setups. Yeah. Cool. I don't get paid enough to have a background. Mm-hmm. So that tells you Ralph's making more than me. Well, you know. <laughs> it is what it is. 175k a day. One, yeah, I don't. Okay, I don't know what that was. <laughs> hey, welcome, man. Let's let let's talk college football tonight. They're talking college football head coaches, but as we have been doing recently, no, 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 we are not going to get to pet peeve of the week. I uh, I could have taken a picture of one, but I probably would have gotten in trouble for it uh, if I would have. That happened this I, evening. I saw about seven from Wednesday to Friday. Yeah, I'm I'm disappointed is the best way to put it that you didn't have anything for us. Oh, I, I mean, I'm sorry. It's it's hard to take a picture when you're driving a UPS truck down the down the side of a road. But well, I, if, well, you could stop. It's kind of hard to stop. You it's don't have to take a obvious if I stop behind someone and take Just a picture a of them of walking walking four horses in the middle of the road. So where was this at? In Hamilton. Let the people know. Let the people out know. In the country. If you're walking your horses on the side of the road, walk on the side of the road, not in the middle, of, not in the middle of the road, please. Mm. You block traffic. Mm. When you do that. So people are walking their horses like a dog and not riding them. What what's going on here? Dude, are I mean, they guiding them? Yeah. So one there was two girls walking four horses down the road. I guess from I guess from one in each hand. Yeah. It's like this, just walking back and forth. The farm was or the barn was over there, and the house is over here. And they're, I guess where they're they do they all they do all are riding in the yard or riding in the little pasture they at. They're just walking over there. I said, "No UPS truck behind you or anything. Just, just take your time." I guess you had to be there. That's a, that's a <laughs> wild concept. Hey, let's uh, let's start it off with this right here. I really, really would love if uh, if you can like the show, if you can follow us on social media. I will tell you this: I'm about this close. We got two people watching on Facebook right now. I'm about this po- close to eliminating live streams on Facebook. Um, because it's just, uh, it's not worth it, uh, to me, but we'll, uh, we're going to keep pushing to see what happens. We're going to start this one off question of the day. Will Manis came up with it. What is your favorite donut spot? Now, guys, are we talking local or are we just talking about big, big chains? Because whatever, not everyone's going to have local spots. Whatever you want it to be. I think we all can come to an agreement on the one, the best one in Columbus. <sighs> I'd rather not say, cause they're not a sponsor. Hashtag not an ad. Not an ad, but still the best, though. That's fine. I'm cool with it. I'm not a donut guy, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's... Golden that's donut. You know, he's... Free advertisement. <laughs> no, that was... Man, I'm going to say it. We're not, we're not I mean, no surprise. What it is, if they don't know what it is. 
Bryce leaves us. He goes to Louisiana. He's no longer a donut guy. He's a, he's a beignet guy. He's never been a donut guy. Uh, in the first place, I've so. never been a donut guy, and beignets are overrated. <laughs> I'll say it right now. It's literally, literally a beignet is just okay. a. First of all, you need to you need to relax. You've had a rough weekend on the internet, and you're not starting this week off you much went, better. Got, you, you went viral for for doing just doing your job. <laughs> and you got hate for it. It's been a, it's been a rough few days for you, Bryce. I mean, are you okay to let it just let's let it out, man? Yeah, I mean, let's let's look, let's you, talk about this. This is this is Bryce's pet peeve of the week. Let's all right, here's, 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 let's, let's go. Let's hear it. Can you hear it? Oh gosh. Okay. Let's go. Pet peeve of the week. Um, Far too often, we see people speak on things, and maybe you think that's Will and Ralph and myself, but you see people speak on things that they absolutely have zero clue of, and we've gotten into this clickbait world of we just post something and we just tweet it or we just put it on Facebook or Instagram, and people just read a blurb and they take their opinions away from it. Now, look, the only point that I'm okay with reading blurbs is when I'm filling out my March Madness bracket and I've got the ESPN plus blurb. I'm cool with that. I can, I can deal with that. Uh, but obviously over the weekend, unless you've been living under a rock, which I imagine most of these people who watch this show have been uh, because they're rock, they're rock dwellers. But unless, unless you have been, you saw the comments that Kim Mulkey made odds are you saw the video that I took, um, Missed opportunity to gain better stability as I did not monetize my ex and Twitter account. Should have. All this being said is I don't care which way you vote. I don't care which way you swing. All I want to sit here and tell you is, is that if you're speaking on something that you have zero clue about, it might be wise to just shut your mouth and listen. Uh, that's pretty much my pet peeve of the week. When you comment something that you have zero clue of and that you're just making judgments off of something, I, I think it's one of the more ignorant things that we can do. It's a massive problem in our country. It's a massive problem in sports fan bases, a massive problem in social media. And uh, that's just an issue. So, like I said, I don't care. I really don't care. Um, and, and I'll say this, too. It get, and People might feel this way about us. It gives people a platform, these social media things. And it gets this idea in the head that people actually care what I think and what I talk about. Um, people don't. Not everyone cares what you think. And the sooner you can come to realization of that, the sooner you might be able to just calm down. And and social media is not a real place. It's not real life. And so it is uh, It is what it is. And Dr. Bob, I apologize. I, yeah, I'm a little cranky. Uh, I didn't want to diss the beignets because I have... Um, I, I, yeah, and I just apologize. I, it's it's a problem. I'm throw up Dr. Bob's comment right here. That is because you haven't been to Cafe Beignet. Once, once again, we just can't be throwing out free advertisements like that. Um, I would have to try it, Dr. Bob. Um, Dr. Bob yes, and we I. Don't, we don't getting, have Maxwell in here. I guess we don't have Maxwell in here. Uh, curbing the free advertising. I don't know what the deal is. I mean, the guy he doesn't get paid, not, but I mean, could you at least not do doing something? His job, man, we hire just him not doing his job. To work for us, and it's not even showing up on time. Hmm. Well, yeah, but that's just kind of how, for that time of weekend went, that was my pet peeve of the week. It's just people commenting on things and it's, I don't care if you comment, but when you have such a hateful or strong opinion on something that you know nothing about, it is one becomes glaringly obvious that you don't know. And then two, it's, it does nothing. Like, why are we all rooting for someone's demise? Like, where are we at in society where we root for people to actively fail? Um, we're going to talk about it later in the show when we talk about Georgia's situation over there in Athens, but uh, that's my pet peeve of the week. Uh, back to the donut conversation. Um, like, I'll just throw it out there. <laughs> my favorite place is uh, Krispy Kreme solid. Like, I feel like Krispy Kreme is pretty just a average, I think it's a solid donut. The problem for me is I don't like their coffee. I love Duncan's coffee. We don't have Duncan down here in Baton Rouge, sadly. Um, Duncan's coffee is better. But Dunkin's co donuts, they they suck to me. I don't like them. So, uh, your, your thoughts? Anymore. I didn't really know that. What'd you say? Uh, I, didn't know you, I didn't know you were a coffee guy. I thought you were. It's a lot of things you don't know about me. <laughs> I don't like that you said that. I've known you for too long for you to say that. Uh, I mean, Krispy Kreme, solid choice. Uh, it's kind of one of those, the best ability is availability. It's everywhere. Mm, yeah. Um, But I'm going to go. Favorite Same. place, Panama City Beach. Thomas's Donuts. That Never place, been. front bit, dude. It's good. You're good. It's I got a better good. one though. Wait, wait, time, time. Aren't there two donut places down in the at the beach area? 
Well, it was a donut hole. If you count that one. I don't. I've okay, never been I, there. I think I've been to the donut hole, not Thomas's. But anyways, yeah, keep going. That's a good one, but will. I, I, I think it, you've all passed it. Then you follow the small little. little okay. Little yes. It's called the Donut King. Yes, the Donut Never King is Ufala. very good. It is a it is, it is a hole in the wall, but they have the best donuts. I just want to throw this out here. Um, you're very right. You're very right. That is a solid place. Uh, real quick, PSA. Can I get a little one spot again, please? A little solo shot here. If you would like free advertising, if you would like your business to be promoted without any type of financial compensation, hit up Ralph because he'll just share anything on Facebook nowadays, and he'll just put it out there for you, um, and then won't consult us. So Max will... If you need to become friends with Ralph on Facebook, because at some point he'll just start sharing lawn care businesses, sharing houses for sale, real estate agents, and just never inquire if they like insurance agents. Insurance agents. I mean, this guy is more well connected than we even realize, and just refuses to ask people for money. Will and I are not above that. We don't think of ourselves above that. I don't know if it's a status deal. I don't know if it's because I've never eaten inside of you know Green Island other than a homecoming dance. I'm just not entirely sure. I don't know. Uh, but what I can tell you to the people watching on Twitter that have zero clue, they thought this was supposed to be a sports talk show for the first 11 minutes, is that uh, Ralph will advertise your business for free. So DM him. Uh, check him out on his Gmail. I'm not going to leak that. Uh, but just, you know, it's uh, just hit him up. Because, I mean, it, it's no shame. Like, this guy knows we're looking for advertisements, shares everything, and refuses to ask for money. So that's uh, that's what we got going there. And he left the show. He He, he decided to come back. Hey Rafa, you want to defend yourself because I don't want to. I don't want to blast you if you're not here. Look, man, if, if, if supporting your friends who are starting a business is a, is wrong, then I don't want to be right. All right then. What What about your friend in the middle right there? Yeah. What about the? What if? Well, let's just lay this hypothetical out here. You have a you have a person. Pay Personal it. attacks here. Yeah, <laughs> he's coming for me. I'm gonna go right back. I mean, I just tell you, I've never seen the inside of Green Island on a Sunday afternoon, so I just couldn't tell you what that's like. Um, let's talk. Let's talk once again. We'll throw out free advertising. I'm gonna start to getting you guys to tape all of your cups where you go to restaurants. Will has gotten caught yeah. out on this show multiple times by viewers and mostly Jonesy of "Hey, Country's Barbecue is good" or "Zaxby's is good" because Will just throws <laughs> out stuff that he has on there. Don't worry, um, I'll cover my cup. Over my here. bad. Well, let's talk college football. I mean, Doctor Bob and John. Burns are the only people watching, and I think other people are like crazy. We're talking head coaches, the new ones, where they've landed, and uh, kind of a grade. We'll give a grade on this. You know, the hires, uh, and once again, kind of like we talked last Monday in this sense, guys, it's essentially what we feel like they can do at the place they're at and maybe how they've done in recruiting so far and, and the staff that they've gathered because when these initial hires were made, the conversation for a lot of guys, including a guy like Fran Brown we're going to kick it off with, is how good can the staff around him be? We talked a little bit about Syracuse a couple weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago now, when we did our ACC rankings. I believe we had them in tier number four with an opportunity to move up. Will, we start with you. Fran Brown, Syracuse. I mean, is this a home run hire? I mean, is this the best they could have done? I mean, not, your thoughts on this situation? Uh, well, I'll just be honest. I don't know a ton about Syracuse historically, kind of what they're about, what they look for. Don't know a lot about them. Um, but I know Fran Brown's a really good coach, really, really good recruiter, did some great things on Georgia's staff. Recruiting-wise, coaching defensive backs, uh, he was a DB's coach last year. They finished ninth in the country in pass defense. Uh, that's pretty dang good. Um, but I'm going to give it I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a B plus. I'm not going to go quite to A. I'm going to give it B plus um, because he's never been a head coach. And yeah. this is a big job for a guy that's never been a head coach. And, it, and it's a true rebuilding job which really suits him, uh, his emphasis on recruiting and his success in recruiting. Uh, so from that aspect, the talent on the roster will go up quickly, and it already has. I mean, th look, look at the transfers he's brought in. Uh, brought in um, – jeez, now I'm blanking on his name. Kyle I was doing McCord. really good. Then what you know, Kyle McCord. Thank Jackson. you, Ralph, from Ohio State. Uh, so the roster is, is already better, um, and, and it will continue to get better. Uh, so I'm going to go B plus B plus. That's solid. I mean, look, he brought in 
a good staff. Uh, he brought in the former defensive line coach at A&M who was an unbelievable uh, recruiter. Uh, Fran Brown has ties, was obviously at Temple and Rutgers, so it's going to help in the northeastern part of the state. Uh, you just with that and getting talent out of the state, which there's talent there. Um, if Syracuse turns into a consistent winner there, and people say, what's a winner? Winner, we're not talking about just winning a national title. We're talking about consistently getting to a bowl game, you know, that six to eight win threshold, maybe seven to nine occasionally. If Syracuse gets to that, man, you're really going to start to see kids want to stay closer to home because you think about a lot of the kids that have kind of recently left the Northeast. I know there's a couple of kids on Georgia's roster that Fran Brown helped to get, you know, down from there. Uh, you kind of start to look around. I think Brown was a great hire. They had decided to go to the, you know, power five positional coach uh, route, which if you're going to go there, guys, you go look at Athens where there's been great coaches over the past four or five years that have done very, very well. Uh, I think Syracuse is hoping to find their Dan Lanning. I mean, Dan Lanning was a DC. I get that. Dan Lanning's in a bigger program in Oregon. Uh, but in a conference that is certainly an opportunity to move up in the ACC, it's a pretty good hire to position yourself uh, as this new age of college football kind of moves around. Your, your thoughts, Ralph? Yeah, I mean, Will hit on, on the head there. I mean, it's, it's a great hire. Um, you know, he's killed it in the transfer portal so far, 27th best uh, class in the transfer portal, which is solid for Syracuse. I mean, you're not going to go get the big four or five star transfer from the big power five schools. I mean, it's just they're not looking to play at Syracuse. Some of them want to play for Fran Brown, of course, but you can't pull in some of the guys who have more money, obviously. The guys who, who can offer more money to you, they're going to go there, obviously. But he's getting the guys that he he knows that want, who want to play and want to work for him. Kyle McCord, obviously, a solid choice for them at quarterback. You know, you have a, you're, 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 you're locked in at quarterback. You're not having a really big battle this offseason, I think. Um, yeah, he didn't really look terrific at Ohio State, but that's because Ohio State's, you know, ceiling's a lot higher than Syracuse. I think he'll have a great year at Syracuse this year. He might even, you know, light up the scoreboards in some games. I think, you know, playing in a, in a dome is a lot different, obviously, than last year. But I mean, it, it's it's a solid team. I think Fran Brown's going to do great there at Syracuse. I give it a B-plus like Will, but, you know, we don't really know. You know it's just yeah. That's one thing about this is like, we're giving our grades, but we don't know for sure until we actually get to see what happens in the fall. Here's something that's interesting, guys. Uh, 2022 class, Syracuse had the 65th best class for the 24-7 or 68th for the 24-7 sports composite ranking. They were in the 70s in 2023. 2024, Fran Brown gets there. Uh, they do some nice work to be able to get a class, including a couple guys out of the state of Georgia. Um, they're pretty good. King Joseph Edwards, a four-star edge there from Mill Creek High School. That's a winning program that he's able to pluck from. Um, they get Marcellus Barnes, who's a uh, cornerback from Chattanooga, a really nice, solid player. They get a couple players. Guys, he got there, and they were able to get the 37th ranked best class in essentially half a cycle. Like, that's that's really impressive. Top 30 uh, transfer class as well. He's going to bring those guys in there, uh, including a kid that um, – We've seen play, or I'm, I've seen play. I don't. Ref might have seen him play too. Um, Jakari Williams out of FPD in Macon was at once committed to Georgia Tech. Really solid player. Won a state title this past year uh, there at that level. That's so superb athlete, honestly. Oh yeah, he, he's a great athlete. So so all those things considered, is it's like, and I know Dr. Bob said here. This is actually a really good point. I don't know if says yep. prior to integration in the South, there were a number of Northern programs that benefited from black players in the South and Syracuse at the top of the heap. Syracuse used to be a powerhouse. Um, you know, I think that it's, it's one of those things I'm giving, I'm going to go B just solid B because I think this is a good hire for them. It's generated interest. Um, mm -hmm. I really don't want our episodes to become redundant, but brand value and in is, is going to be massive. I think Fran Brown brings up the brand value temporarily for this program of where they needed to be. Uh, it's not like Dino Babers had done a bad job necessarily. Um, he had kind of fallen off a little bit. Um, but you remember, they didn't have a quarterback at the end of last season. They were literally running the option with like a tight end. It was wild. So I, I go Fran Brown. I think we're all in that category of B to B+. Plus. It's a good hire. Uh, he surrounded himself on paper with some good coaches. He's brought in some talent. Uh, year one's going to be pivotal. But I think Fran Brown's a nice little landing spot. Uh, for our Syracuse is, is, is in is in good hands, I should say. I, it kind of feels like. I, I don't think this is going to be – I'll say this. I don't think they're going to fall flat on their face. But I'm also not saying they're going to win the ACC. Like I think they could be a respectable program. I just don't. I don't know who else you would have went for, honestly, in the situation. I feel like this is a a solid hire, and I don't think there's a better hire for this this university for this program. Well, True. 
I'll tell you yeah, what, it wasn't the worst. There's different ones you can go. Obviously, say like, oh, they could have gotten so and so from, or they could have gotten Tim Mil- or you know Mike Elko. Oh, okay, he's not going to Syracuse. You know, he's, just because a coach loves the school does not mean he's going to go to Syracuse for another job. It's just you yeah. get who they, they they got the guy they could get, and that was the right fit. For them. It wasn't the worst hire in the ACC. That's a fact. We'll get to That's that later. Definitely true. <laughs> definitely true. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, this is exciting. Young, energetic head coach. He's got to surround himself. Um, and I, I like the staff he put around him. And I think Kyle McCord will do well there. Um, a lot of people are going to point and say, well, he lost a, they lost a USF. It's like, okay, well, if that's the argument you want to take. Then you're just, once again, you're a rock dweller. And we don't, we don't appreciate rock dwellers on this show. Um, and, and Jonesy, you're wrong. Uh, Manny Diaz, not the worst hire, in our opinion. You might be right in your mind, but not the worst one. All right, let's roll to the next one here. Oops. Sharon and up. Moore. I might surprise y'all with this. Uh, can we just go and just go our grade straight up before we, you know, say get about? into it? Yeah, let's go ahead. Go across the board, Ralph. You go first. Grade, we'll grade, grade, and then we'll come back to you for your your spiel. C plus. I was going to say B minus. Um, um, yeah. Well, B minus, B minus for yeah. me too. All right, we'll go back to Ralph. <laughs> Tell us what you think. <laughs> uh, look, I mean, yes, obviously you lose Harbaugh to the NFL. Everyone saw it coming. You know, it wasn't like it was a shocker, I guess. Um, but you wouldn't just you just hired inside you, the guy who took who interim was your interim coach for those games he was suspended for. You just let him coach and you just promoted him basically. I, I think it's it's a good hire. It's not the best hire. I think they could have probably found someone outside and maybe a better job for this. I think he's really passionate. We saw how passionate he was against uh, was it Penn State. Yeah, is that when he cried yeah. on field? Yeah, it, 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 you know he's a good coach. He's a it's, it's a good hire. I just think they could have found someone better. I'll we go. saw that because of the mass exodus after Harbaugh. I'll go because mm-hmm. I want to follow what you said here. Um, they got a, they got some turnover. They got they had, you know roster turnover. They got some guys to replace. Um, and credit Jim Harbaugh, he built this program in his image, and it eventually won. Like that's awesome. But Sharon Moore is going to be built, going to be judged off of how he builds it in his image. I think one of the big questions is, is what is what does he want this program to look like? Is it going to look like the same thing? You know, are they going to be a heavy run team? Are they? Is that what they're going to look like? A you know a ground and pound type of team? I think that's what he's going to be you know judged off of, not of what happened eventually. Uh, you know, as he gets out throughout his tenure. And I think we also have to say here too, like this is a tough spot to be in. Uh, Kalen DeBoer might be in a tougher spot in terms of you know, the shoes you're filling, yeah. but Sharon Moore is in a tough spot. Like you just, you're replacing a guy that brought Michigan football back, back to the center of the college football world. But you know, that that's something that, you know, once again, we talk about all these programs guys that were really, really big when we were younger and kind of fell off. Michigan was one of those. And when Harbaugh got there, he started to build them back up into what they wanted to be. And eventually it led to a national title. So, you give credit in that sense. I just don't know. I think this was an easy hire, like Ralph said. I think it made sense. It made sense. And, and look, it might pay off. I just wonder. I don't know. I just wonder if they really would have opened this search up. Who who could they have gotten? Like, that would have been my question. And I don't know. Like, I, I don't, I'm not saying I know who they would could go after. I don't know if anyone does. Maybe people have ideas. Maybe Michigan insiders have ideas. But, well, because I throw it to you, like, it feels like they could have done better when you talk about what that program was, but maybe they didn't need to do better. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I kind of lean that way. They didn't have to do better. Um, you're keeping a guy that was a very, very big player. No matter what you say about him, he was a very big p- player, big reason why they won the national championship this past year. Coached four games in Harbaugh's absence, um, mm-hmm. won all those games, helped – build that offense. He's an offensive line guy, so they're probably going to look the same. And you just want a national championship. You don't need to go outside and, and change it all up if you don't have to. Um, he did have to replace some coaches, replace defensive coordinator. He goes out and gets Wink Martindale, uh, which I think is very, very, yeah. very <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Um, it's going to be – it's going to – I'm just interested to see how he fits in the college game. Um, 
coming from the NFL. Obviously, their their scheme will be mostly the same. Uh, he was on uh, Baltimore Ravens staff for a long time, and and we we saw Michigan and the Ravens kind of trade defensive coaches yeah. uh, for several yeah. years, going back and forth. Um, so, but yeah, I'm going to go B minus. I, I think you stay in house if you can, right after you win a national title, um, and then also. You know, just looking forward to if we want to revisit these at some point, you got to consider what the NCAA is going to do after the, the cheating scandal last year. True. I kind of, I'm kind of leaning that they do nothing because they've lost most of their power and Harbaugh's <laughs> gone anyway. So they can probably just be like, yeah, we don't have to do anything. Well, and, and that's a good point. I think, the, and you kind of alluded to this, I think the loss of Jesse Minner is going to hurt. I think Jesse Minner is a really, really good football coach. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's a guy that when you look at his resume, I mean, guys, you read it. Defensive intern, Notre Dame, grad assistant, Cincinnati, linebackers coach, Indiana State, uh, D.C. at Indiana State, the D.C. for three years uh, at Georgia State, defensive assistant with Baltimore, assistant DB's coach at Baltimore, DB's coach at Baltimore, D.C. at Vandy and safeties, D.C. Michigan, and now D.C. and the Chargers. It's a guy who's worked his way, like like up the, co up the, the coaching ranks. And I think that's going to be a big loss for them. And I think he's really primed to do really well in his career. It's going to be hard. Michigan's going to take a step back. Like they, they just are. I don't, I don't have the same, and, and, and you could allude to coaching changes, whatever you want to talk about. I don't think that Michigan is going to have a year like Georgia did the year after they won the national title. Georgia was deeper. And also Georgia, even though they've had to withstand a lot of coaching turnover, the head man was still there. So it's a little bit different of a situation. Um, I just go B minus though. My my biggest question, and maybe folks watching after the fact or live know, is who, if they really would have opened it up, like how attractive is that job to people coming off a national title? I think it is very attractive. I think people are very scared of the <clears throat> potential sanctions. Sanctions, yeah. That see. Maybe that's why they went with more. Like, I don't know enough on the situation to really know. Uh, Dr. Bob does say here, we know Dr. Bob was at the game. He's at every single game. Um, my best man and his dad are pissed at Ward Manuel. They're convinced Ward ran Harbaugh off. I think Harbaugh was just done with college football and always wanted to go back to the NFL. Michigan fans think the school is self-sabotaging its own success with academic restrictions and NIL stuff. He also says, Ward was pretty creative in the game. I was impressed being there in person. And Dr. Bob again, Jesse Minner will be an NFL head coach in five years. I don't doubt that statement either. I mean, I think Minter's a really, really good football coach. Yeah. But uh, any any final thoughts on Sharon Moore? I mean, it's just kind of like, eh, let's see what happens. Yep. I mean, it's just, it, it, honestly, I'm not, it's not, we didn't really see much of a coaching search. It was, it, no. if, if I, I don't want to say it like this because it's, it's not. We all know coaching searches are not this way. It's feel like a lazy hire. And not, and it's you know what I mean? Like, you know, there was no public, it was the like, easy was, route, right? And it, it, there was no public, like, this guy's interview and this guy's interview. No, it was just like, yeah, we he, he's our head coach now. It's just was it was kind of quick and it was, I think everyone knew. So, it was, I mean, yeah, it's not like one of those situations where you have a, a long tenured head coach retire and then his OC steps in who's been under him for 12 years, you know, it's yeah. not like that situation. So, um, I mean, I say C plus. It doesn't mean I think they're going to be bad. I just don't think it's no, bad. no, no. I, I think he can keep them a double digit win team easily. I mean, just I mean, think about it. it's a they, tough schedule, and they lost a lot, man. They lost a lot. They could have gone out and hired Jimbo Fisher, but they didn't. You know that probably would have knocked them under the double digit win threshold. That might, but they might have brought, they might have just throw the, the NCAA might have done sanctions on them just because of that. <laughs> He's won a national <laughs> championship. I mean, I don't care. That's a national funny. championship winning head coach. There's not many of those just laying so, around. So is Mac Brown. Um, all right. Are still available. Next. Will, we kind of figured Who's out. hitting it? <laughs> Will, you're done. You're, you're it, Will. You're doing it the rest of the night. All right. Kalen DeBoer. Now, this one is going to be one a lot of people are obviously talked about. We're going to start grades. We're going to go from Will to myself to Ralph and then back to Will because Will – I'm going to hold you accountable to what you said when Kalen DeBoer was being hired. I'm going to see if you're going to follow up with this. So go with your grade and then tell me what you think. C plus. Okay. I'm going, uh, I'm going B. B. That's why I feel about it. I'm going to go B Ralph. plus. B plus. I, I, think, I think it's a solid hire. All right. Back to Will. No, Will, I will interject. Never forget it, Dr. Bob. Never forget that Gene Chiswick won a national championship. 
Never well, forget. Yeah. It. Cam Newton's dad won a national championship. Um, Will. Kalen DeVol- won a national championship? Uh, yeah, C+. Plus. Um, I'm just waiting because I'm interjecting as soon as he says what I think. If he doesn't say what I think he's going to say, I'm interjecting. No, Go. Bryce, I'm going to put him full screen, but if he says it, I'm, you, 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 you solo out yourself, okay? Go ahead. So, number one, the guy's a winner. The guy has won everywhere he's been uh, at, at the – whatever level Sioux Falls is in AI. Is that what level they are? I don't even know, but they're, they're down there like that. Fresno state, uh, head coach there. He was OC at Indiana really turned around their offense. I was like the last time they were good. He's a big reason for that. And obviously went to the playoff, uh, last year with Washington, really, really good football coach, um, has won everywhere. So from the winning aspect, Alabama is getting exactly what they want, but the big question he has never coached in the Southeast, never recruited much in the Southeast. Um, can he recruit? Can he get the players in to keep up the success and win national championships like Nick Saban did? And, you know, unfortunately for him, that's how he's going to be judged is, is compared to Nick Saban. But um, – and I go C-plus because I'm, I'm worried about the recruiting. The last time an SEC school went out west to hire – a head coach that had never been in the Southeast. That didn't work out too good. Um, but again, that guy that that other unnamed SEC school went out and hired uh, did not have the resume, did not have uh, wasn't did not have a playoff appearance. Uh, so it's two very different situations. Um, I'm going C plus. Uh, going to wait and see about the recruiting. 2025 is not off to the best. Start you misspelled it, but that's okay. He doesn't uh, deserve to have his name spelled correctly. Um, 2025. I mean, they've got two players in the top 10, they're looking there. There's another one leaning toward them, so but yeah, we got to wait and see. Have to wait and see. Okay, so what I just heard a portion you didn't interject, I didn't interject because you were you told us you said I'm gonna be as, as an Auburn fan. Like I, I might be scared if they hired DeBoer because he wins. Like yeah, you, you mentioned winner. that because he's a winner. He's a winner. He has won everywhere. He has never stepped down or faltered in the spotlight. People are going to say, "Well, they lost to Texas in the national championship." Well, only one team can win the national championship, guys. He took he he, he took Washington to the national championship. That doesn't happen. Um, you know that kind of stuff. My take on the recruiting aspect is. Well, I, I heard a little bit of uh, some former Discord member type of conversation coming out of your mouth when you heard when you when you went back to the conversation of a personal experience. And while your personal experience was not fun, I, and I don't even want to make fun of you about the personal experience that you had with that coach, I think this is completely different in the sense of like I feel like Kalen DeBoer I, has won well, some I, battles already. I said it. He had a better resume. He True, you, you did. Playoff, I, so. I was concerned before you got to the comma butt part. I was concerned. The track record is much better for for this guy than than the last guy. Um, you were right though. Alabama and the SEC are going to present an entirely different challenge this guy has ever faced. Uh, the idea of living up to the expectations of what Saban is always going to be there, especially with Saban kind of really still around the program. Like that's going to be just an uncomfortable thing. I think at some point, regardless of how much the media or Alabama fans or Alabama media tries to tell you that it's going to be okay. That's kind of a weird concept. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that this season. Now I'm going to tell you one thing. If they don't win 10 games this year, the, once again, the rock dwellers are going to come out and talk to you about how it was a terrible hire. Are you talking about the Kentucky basketball fans? The New York Yankees fans and the Dallas Cowboy fans are going to come out and tell you on the social medias about how it's, it, it wasn't a good hire. We hired the wrong coach. That's what they're going to say. Yes. Um, you, you sat in that office and you, you, you made the phone calls to all the coaches who interviewed, and you were there, you sat through the interviews, and you, you did all the work. <laughs> That's what – I was just unaware that they polled the fan base before asking who they wanted to be the hand head coach. I think that this is a B with the potential to be a B plus by the year. I think he's going to be, I think he guys that have the mentality of a Kalen DeBoer. Okay. They figure it out. 
And I think that's where the hope for Alabama fans need need to be. Because, like, yes, there are concerns. Will list them. Not a lot of experience in the Southeast. Alabama and the SEC is a completely different beast. But guys with the mentality where he has shown at every single stop, winners figure it out. Um, look, we kind of mocked and, and joked about Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh's a winner. Now, whether you think his methods are weird or whatever, he eventually figured it out um, to, to win there. So – I think DeBoer is a guy that is – I feel comfortable in saying he's going to figure it out. Now, the problem is, are you measuring that up against – we talked about this on our live show, which is one of the most unhinged call-in shows ever. We talked about this when DeBoer was hired and Saban retired. Of like, whoever comes in, he's going to be measured against Saban, but you can't. So if we're measuring against the rest of college football, I think Kalen DeBoer is going to be a good hire. If we're measuring against Saban, well, then no one's going to be a good hire for Alabama. Yeah, I mean, it's just – it's unfair. It's unfair to compare him to Saban. It's, 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 and there are going to be seventy five percent of Alabama fans who do, you know, and that's just is, that's just that's the fan base is. Um, is it though? He's signing up for this. I look. Oh, I'm he's sure signing he up for it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sure he knows what he signed up for. I, I don't think he's just. But also, let, let me say this too, to to interject because Ralph has a point and Will has a point. If is it fair to compare? Yes, you're going to compare. But like, if this guy wins two national titles in in ten years. Let's just say he's there for seven or eight years, and he wins two national titles. That's a dang good football coach. Now, when you put that's Nick Saban up against it, it doesn't look that great. You know what I'm saying? So, like that, I think that's the point because yes, he's going to be compared, like you said, Will. But like, if he has success, but it's just not what seven national titles in like thirteen to ten or twelve years that Saban had. I mean, just something you know, fifteen years. If he's not winning half the national titles that he coaches in in Alabama, like. That's unheard of. Like, it's not happening. Um, they might do it in Athens, get close to it. But I think after with this, all this stuff with conference expansion, uh, it's going to be super hard to do that ever again. Yeah, I mean, college football is a, is a new beast now. I mean, you have two mm-hmm. dominant conferences now. You don't have, you know, the, the power five anymore. It's a, really the power three or two and a half, really. You know, and, and you know, DeBoer has just opened up a new world for him. And now – they brought in DeBoer. He's a great quarterbacks coach. You know, I'm hoping they get, get you know, help Milrow out. You know, I think Milrow's mm-hmm. already been a great, he's a great athlete. Can he be a better quarterback? Possibly. Do I think he'll yeah. be a starting quarterback the whole year? Will probably disagrees. I know that he does, but I think what DeBoer is going to do is going to be some great things. I think, you know, Saban was compared to Bear Bryant for the longest time, which obviously is the, the dumbest comparison of all time. Two different eras. But I think at one point you're gonna, people are going to ask how much how much you know hand does Saban have in this in, the, in some of the calls and like you know not, obviously not on the field but like you know yeah. coaching hires and you know anything like that you know eventually the board's going to step in and say look man I get it this is my team now I got you got to let me do it and uh, if he fails he fails he'll, he he's not a coach to just blame it on someone else he'll he'll take the fall. Well, the question is going to be, what's the definition of failure? Is the definition of failure if Alabama falls back to a seven, five, eight, and four? Yeah, consistently, well, yeah, that's failure. Sorry, that that sorry, is failure in Alabama. Hire like the OC, and like he brought his OC, and I think his OC is fine. I think it's a great hire. You know, you bring a new DC from a, um, his OC works for his OC the Seahawks. Le- his OC oh, left. Right. I'm sorry, I forgot about that too. Sorry, but he brought in you know a new DC. Now, if their de- their defense is just absolute crap. You know, they just don't even show up to games, basically. You know, Saban's going to be like, look, man, you should have hired the, the guy I told you to hire. You know, it's just I'm – not, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying that's probably what, what's going on. And eventually, the board's going to look, I'll take my fall for it, but you got to let me make my hires. Which, per Ralph and the flag behind him, that D.C. is no good, right, Ralph? I'd say, was, I'd say he's a great D.C. He's not a good head coach. Look, <laughs> some people are just good, good coordinators. All right. Two coaches to go, good coordinator, not a good head coach. Mm. Per per you. How long has got the sixth think... best class in the country right now? The what? 2025? Yeah, sixth best class in the country. They finished number two last year. And they're able to hey, keep, that's, obviously. That's five, that's five away from being good. <laughs> if you have Will's standards of good, then yes, it's the Alabama will not be good. Georgia's the best team in the country. Uh, Georgia didn't have the number one class. I don't know who does. Notre Dame. 
Oh, never mind. But if that's due to that's due to quantity. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyways, right. Kalen DeBoer. Uh, yeah. If if you don't think he was a winner, he went sixty-seven and three as the head coach at Sioux Falls in five years, and in two years at Washington, went twenty-five and three. With a, with a national championship show or uh, appearance. That's really good. It's very good. Mm. Very 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 good. I'm going to give my grade and then just move on. Um, B. B plus. That's all I've got. I don't even have any spiel on it. B. I don't, I don't know anything. I, I thought it was I that he he left his alma mater, but obviously I think that's great bad. foresight on his part. You see they get paid $65 million, by the way? Did y'all see that? Oregon really? State and Washington State is getting paid $65 million each from the teams as a really? breach of the contract that they leave the Pac-12. They deserve more. Maybe Georgia Tech can get that when the ACC disbands. <laughs> okay. Um, we move it, moving forward. Moving forward. Yeah, I, I'm not. Onward. We're not. Ooh. Onward. Hello. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get crazy here. All right. I'm going A minus. Because this program needed hope and excitement. And Jeff Levy's going to give them that. There is immediate juice when Jeff Levy is in the conversation. Don't even mind the Egg Bowl conference. The Egg Bowl is going to be wild this upcoming year. But guys, like seriously, you talk about the juice. Jeff Levy's gotten, uh, he got a quarterback uh, commit that flipped from Oregon, I believe, in the 2024 cycle. Um, so he he got that commit. They're, I will tell you this, the state of Mississippi traditionally not amazing or deep in recruiting. The 2025 and 2026 class has some really, really nice players. And there's players that they could see might stay in state. If Mississippi State can win this battles, I like Jeff Levy. I think he's going to excite a fan base. Not saying he's going to win the SEC, but I think it's there's a lot of hope around Stark Vegas. I'm going to say B plus, mostly for the same reasons. Um, he'll recruit a little bit better. Their offense be fun to watch. They probably won't play a ton of defense. Um, but that's okay. Like you said, this is – SEC is massive. I think Mississippi State knows where they are, <clears throat> where they fit in the pecking order. Uh, some programs don't understand that, but I think Mississippi State does, and they'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Well, uh, they know exactly who they are, like you said, and I think that's the biggest thing. Ralph, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go B plus. Also, I, I kind of want to go A, A minus. Um, anything's better than what they just had. Honestly, at this point, uh, CBS. No, no, don't don't talk about Zach Cornett like that. You're gonna talk about Zach Cornett like he that. was awful. He was awful. Uh, yeah, CBS but he has this great as a C, come on. which I think is awful. Be a little bit that. nicer. Man took over. I'm and, not, I'm not actually I, I, Man but, but to, to kind of hear some of the things that he he did in his alone year there is crazy. Like when Will Rogers came out and Will Rogers family was told, Hey, we're gonna be running some of the same stuff and commits to that system, and then they just said, nah, screw it, we're not going to do it. Like, you just set your team up to fail. And, like, I watched that team this past year in person. I mean, that's fair. They were dog really water. Bad. Dog water. They're really bad. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, anything's better than what they had. Uh, I think I think Levy's a great coach. Obviously, he's, you know, he has his time in the SEC already. Uh, yeah. He's come from Oklahoma. You know, he's got his quarterback. Like you said, he's got to commit, you know, this is not this this is a long tier kind of option here. This is not going to be a two to three year uh you know trial. I think Levy's there for about five years. I think he he develops a solid offense there, and they make a a good run for a nice you know New Year's Six bullet beer. I think that's and look, it's a tough conference. Or go ahead, finish. I'm sorry. Well, I was to say, and you're, I was about to go off what you just said. It's a harder conference now. You add Texas and Oklahoma now, so it's not just the normal teams you play every year. So you're adding more competition, and then, you know, it's just, it, it's look, winning the SEC is not going to be easy for any coach out there. I know we have our top three, you know, tier tier teams, but those tier three or tier one teams have chances to lose almost every week. Yeah, no, I say right. almost, but then, you know, obviously when Alabama plays Vanderbilt or Georgia plays Vanderbilt, they're not going to just go roll over and get beat by fifty. Vandy fans clip it. Yep. Um, this is a good comment. Mississippi State, it's the best, Dr. Bob says, is a plucky underdog that plays an exciting brand of offense, Kansas scores a big upset. And I think Jeff Levy gets back to that. Like, I think in a different way. That's what they were under Mike Leach. They were a headache to game plan and scheme against. 
Uh, they had a quarterback that knew the system when Will Rogers was really, really good in the air raid. And uh, <laughs> uh, I believe they called him Booby Marks, but Jaquavius Marks uh, was really, really good running back. He's out of USC now, I think. Um, yes. So, you know, just, just overall, I think I think that is going to be – and Ken says from an F to C, I guess feels like an A minus. We're not talking about the state of the program. We're just talking about like this hire, what it does for them, rejuvenates interest in the program. Those folks are excited about football, where there was no excitement this year in football. Like it was just awful. Um, and, and they've had a rough past solid. eighteen months. They had a really solid transfer portal too. I mean, it's not yeah. the, the best, but it's a solid. You got Blake. It's Shelton a solid foundation. You got a, you got a, oh. a good quarterback. Oh. Will doesn't like Blake. Oh. Oh. All right. Well, for the next oh. one, I'll just I'll go ahead. No, this is where'd you go? This is this was all you. Uh, I'm just gonna oh, say. Oh God, plus. it's misspelled. It's misspelled. Is it? It's J. It's J O N. Just getting embarrassed on live television. Can't even spell it right. What is wrong with you? Well, uh, I, 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 we've got the expert here. The expert didn't give me any help because he's just. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Look, it's an A plus. A plus higher. This isn't. I mean, there's no. There, it's the truth. It's an A plus higher. I get it. Look, in his two years at Troy, he won more games than Chip Lindsey saw in four years. I mean, just he he did great. He's a great recruiter. He's a great head coach. He's a defensive minded coach. Tulane's got a solid defense now. He brought some transfers over. Brought his coaches over. Yeah, he he's done tore Troy the uh, program apart, and that's what he did. Uh, left us left us with the dust. Um. I think you know Tulane's got a great future ahead of them. I don't know how long it'll be at Tulane before he makes a jump to a new new program. Shut up, Doctor Bob. No one cares what you think. You've been there every game. You're you, you're not a real person, honestly. Um, at this point, look, I know I joke about summer all the time. I, I don't care. You have season tickets. You're, you have season tickets for Duke games, Michigan games, Tennessee Tech games. I mean, any any one. You, you go to every game at this point. Look, it's a great hire. I know I joke about it a lot. I know I always say all this stuff about it. He's a great coach. I mean, just a great person in general. He brought a great culture to Troy in his two years there. He brought back the when 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 Neil Brown was there and how you know dominant defense, a stellar offense, um, and winning on both sides of the ball. And that's what he yeah. does. And that's what he established at Troy. Uh, he created the all time greatest tackler in college football history. Uh, had a terrific offense this past year with Kamani Vidal. Um, you know, he's he's going to tear it up at Tulane. He's got more options now. He's got some great transfer talent coming in. It's insane. Yeah. They're going to dismantle the American Conference this year and roll to an easy undefeated season. Jump into that nice little 12th spot in the playoff and get rolled in the first round. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ken Henderson says, feel like the exact same thing Jerome Collins came to take. I'm going to tell you right now, couldn't be further from the truth. Um, John Summerall went 23 and four and won two Sun Belt titles. Those he is losses, really, really good. Four losses to Kansas State, Ole Miss, Duke. Nebraska. No, he didn't, play, he didn't play Nebraska. Duke and uh, App State on the uh, Hail Mary. And Ole Miss, he lost by 18. Kansas State got dismantled by. Duke lost because well actually you no know, he didn't lose to Duke because he didn't coach that game. But this is the thing. Sumrall Sumrall is close, I feel like, to getting a better job. The Mississippi and job. We talked about this. We talked about this. Like he was in the conversation. Kentucky, uh, if if Mark Stoops left, I'm Mark sure Stoops Kentucky was, was, was making Stoops plans. Gone, he's the first call. They love him up there. He's a lovable person everywhere. Everywhere he's been, every coach has said good things about him. Obviously, they have to say they they say everything public when they get new jobs. But I mean, I've heard good things about him when he was at Ole Miss, uh, when he was in Kentucky. I mean, he's he's done a great job so far. He's taken over two lane program that has gone twenty three and four. And why I think this is a big thing, and Doctor Bob could have absolutely an opinion on this, not. is absolutely I agree a hundred percent, Doctor Bob. Why not? Why not? I agree a hundred percent. He, he, why he'd not? Be walking into a dumpster fire. Yeah, but he'd be turning and, it around. That's that's the whole idea of moving up in the coaching just, world. Just saw what, uh, you don't walk world. into like great situations. He is right now. He's walking into a terrific situation. Yeah, but Tulane's He's not a power. Mm -hmm. He's renting. Oh, I, He's renting wanna, in New Orleans, which you probably should be renting in New Orleans. 
I want to um, jump the list a little bit since since these are intertwined. Um, talk about Willie Fritz. Just he one is. more note on Tulane. When you think about Willie Fritz just leaving on his own like that to go get a John Summerall, I mean, how fortunate are they? Did Tulane That's, that's really why it's an A+. Plus. Is this Tulane is, uh, winners of this deal? I think so. Let's just say this. Uh, Willie, uh, it's, uh, Dana Holgerson has caused – this collapse for the last six years in Troy. It's his fault. When he left West Virginia, when he left West Virginia to take the Houston job. <laughs> what? Dana I didn't think, I did think, I did not think about this. I did not think about this. this a long Troy. time ago. When Dana Holgerson left West Virginia for the Houston job, it opened for Neil to go there. Okay. When he leaves Houston and think Willie Fritz goes in, some is taken. This is all Dana Holgerson's fault. I told y'all this a long Fair time enough. ago. Obviously, y'all just don't listen to me. Just... No, we know. That's good. No, Willie um, to Houston, it feels lateral to me personally. Yeah, very much. It feels very lateral. Much. Like, this is – I know they're in the Big 12, <clears throat> but Tulane's got a better chance of getting the playoff than Houston does. Yeah. Just my two yeah, cents. I, I, That's I, I agree. That's all I got. I agree. <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> I hear always sunny conspiracy meme. It's just, I need all the little math equations going around my head right now. <laughs> this is like the Dr. Bob corner of the show. Manny Diaz. Duke. B plus. I think you go I'm not going to go that minded. high. I'm going to go B. I, I go, I, I'm going to make mine quick real quick about it. You go from defensive minded coach to a defensive minded coach. I think you stay the same. I think it's a B plus. Um, they will have an off year this year because a lot of guys left after Elko left, but they will rebuild. They will be fine. I think he's a good hire for them. For what Duke is, and Dr. Bob can speak to this obviously a little bit. The expert was obviously around the program, friend of the program. For what for what they show Duke can be, there's no reason why Manny Diaz can't keep that level up. Agree. I don't. I don't know. And Dr. and Dr. Bob can ask, ask answer this question. I don't know what more you can do at Duke than what they did this year. Occasionally challenge for, and that that is God. He has such good football opinions, take statements. But I don't know what more you could do because they challenged for an ACC title until what last four or five games of the season, and their quarterback got hurt. Investment in Durham, Philly, Philly. Oh, facilities are better than Tech at Duke. I like it. It. This is this is this is my take. Miami didn't even want Manny Diaz. Yeah, the Joker went twenty-one Insane. and sixteen. They're dysfunctional, and they literally tried to kick him out so they could bring back Cristobal. Bring in Cristobal. Yeah. Yeah. The guy was the DC <clears throat> left, and they said, "Now, nah, can you come back, your head coach?" He's a good coach. He's a good coach. Yeah, very good coach. He is. Um, <laughs> but I I say B too because I I feel like Duke had momentum to to step up and be that number three team number three program in the ACC even with all their limitations uh yeah but they didn't go for the splash and this is probably why it's a better hire and why it will probably work out better in the long run because you get a guy that's been a head coach knows the league knows what Duke is about knows those limitations <clears throat> and and that's probably why it will work out better but I just it doesn't. It just doesn't have that splash feeling, which, like we it. mentioned earlier with Sharon Moore, that might have that might be the best route for them. Yep. Yeah. Now, Ralph, they, obviously, I, I think they bring in. A, you know, I just, I don't know who the splash hire would could have been. You know, it's the same what I said about Sharon Moore. I, I just don't know who else you could have gone after that would fit the program after what Elko left it as. Kurt Signetti. Um, like it would have yeah. been a it have been a top group of five guy. I it, think, or, or a good degree. It would have been, been a riskier pick or, you know, decision than Manny Diaz, but I, I still think that uh, Diaz is a solid pick. I think it's a B plus. I, I'm thinking that going forward, they'll be good. They got Malik Murphy coming in from Texas. <laughs> he, he got a solid quarterback for you now. Um, I, I like it. I think, I think Manny Diaz is getting too much hate from his Miami years, which is – which you count the 2019 season was okay. Then you had to go to the 2020 season. 
I mean, no one had a great year that year, but besides Bama. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. I, Diaz gets way too much hate. He's too good of a coach to get that much hate. I'll say this. Um, don't don't sleep on Grayson Loftus and uh, Henry Bellin. I think that Malik Murphy, it's a splash addition. Mm-hmm. I don't think that job's completely settled from reading some stuff. So that was an issue, but it's good. But it's good. You, you yeah. brought in a guy, you've got multiple options. Ralph, you hit the nail on the head. We talked about it. It's once again, rock dwellers that are sitting here saying, man, Diaz, it's a joke of a head coach. hire." Well, why? Like you tell me why nobody was winning with Miami. He was 20, he was 21 and 15. Uh, correction on that. Dr. Bob, it says 21 and 15 on, on the uh, stat sheet over here. I might be wrong. Who knows? Well, He's 21 and 15 at a dysfunctional Miami. If you can go, if you can do that in Miami, like he can keep Duke at this seven to eight win threshold. There's no, there, like that's not completely out of the realm of possibility. And like Will said, into the top half of that, he can have Duke as a top half as ACC team. Yeah. To me, like that, that that's not asking a ton, in my opinion. I don't know what Jonesy's talking about. I don't about. know what that is. Let's this is like on. our fifth conversation. Move All right. on. Once again, into the Dr. Bob sector um, <laughs> of the show. So Mike easy. Elko to a and I mean, once again, I have feelings about this guy's like I do about Sharon Moore. Uh, there was talk about, well, could they get Dan Landing? You know, could they get other, you know, guys? This one made the most sense. It pretty much everyone kind of labeled this was going to happen from the beginning. I'm going to go with B. I don't know what the ceiling is, but I feel like hiring this guy, had, it, it gives you a floor. And to me, they didn't have a floor with Jimbo Fisher. You didn't know if it was going to be three wins, four wins, seven wins, eight wins. To me, this gives you a floor. How high is the ceiling? That's that's going to be the big question with Elko. Yeah, I'm going to go B plus um, because the goal at Texas A&M is to win a national title. Mike Elko is going to win a lot, but is he going to win a national title? Um, again, SEC's getting a lot more difficult. Uh, they've got Big Brother back in their conference, which is going to, I think, hurt them a lot. I know they've got as deep of pockets as anybody. They like to say they have more money than Texas, but they don't have the brand value that Texas has. And now that Texas has that SEC badge, it just elevates it even more. Um, like you said, it gives them a floor, which I think is probably eight wins is their floor. Any Anything worse would be – or anything less would be a, a major, major issue there. Um, but there's there's no reason they can't sit eight to ten wins with, with Mike yeah. Hill. I, I'm cool with that. Wrap your thoughts. Yeah, I'm gonna be minus. I think I, I think it's a great hire. Um, I I like the hire of Mike Elko. I think he's a great coach. Obviously, his two years at Duke was proves that he could be a head coach anywhere and win. I mean, you go to Duke and win is, is in in two years is pretty impressive. I think uh, A and M kind of the the Dan Lanning comment. I, I agree. They probably wanted him, but if he didn't take the Bama job, he was not going anywhere else. Well, and then was open first. That's true, but yeah, I think if he didn't take if he you know wouldn't take the Bama job, I don't think he would take anything else. Um, I'm with you. I like what he's done so far in his additions. I think he's got a cool, a pretty cool offensive you know coaching staff with Trooper Taylor and Colin Klein. I think it's gonna be a fun duo to watch on the sidelines. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's it's I think it's a fun hire. Obviously, you bring someone to that who knows the program, knows what the standards are. So I'm thinking that you know going forward, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a B minus, but it could. I think they I think an eight to nine wins is is solid for them right now. I think he'll do better, way better than Jimbo Fisher ever did there. I just think the floor is the, the, the floor is raised. Like I think there's going to be a level of consistency with Elko that you didn't have under Jimbo, where Any, you can win eight to nine wins a game like or eight to nine yeah. wins a season like you just said. But then you can you have room for it. It's not just this constant roller coaster that was Jimbo Fisher. Fisher. Whoa, Jimbo Fisher oh, there at uh, um, yeah. I, I is that is that the... XMLB pitcher Doug's cousin? Is that who, is that who Bryce is talking about? I don't know. Uh, I had a comment, man. I can't even think of it. Bryce suspended himself from the show, but he already lifted it. Um, Bryce, you can't stop. 
<laughs> that's Will. That's I not even we were me. All doing no. it. I think we were all doing we're it. All doing it. Um, look, I, I think there's familiarity with the program for, for Elko. I think he, he knows what the standard is. I think he knows that he could probably win with what he has there and, the, and you know, all the tools he has there. I think he, you've given him, you know, a, a, a treasure chest full of all kind of tools to use for the way to help this program win. And I think he's going to actually use them for the right reasons in the go win program and win, and win, and win championships. That's what he wants to do there. I think that's what he set a, set a goal for himself and, he has a chance to do it, and this is the, and he's the guy I think that can do it there. Mm. <laughs> Jonesy, FCC, call him Bruce tonight. That correct? Could be, could actually happen. Um, how many more we got, Will? Uh, I'm gonna cut some out. So let's go. We're not cutting the last. Let's go. Th- let's go three more. Three more, okay. And then we'll take a quick Starting, commercial break. We'll come back and talk about Georgia. Starting with Ralph. Jared Parker. Yeah. Got to hear from Ralph here. Uh, Or as Bryce lovingly calls him, Gerard. Yeah, Gerard. Uh, It's a B-plus hire for Troy. Um, Guy familiar with the program, like I said earlier, about Mike Elko going to A&M. He was there with Neil. He's been with Sumrall. He knows Sumrall. He knows what this program wants to do. Um, It's basically bringing Sumrall Jr. in. Kind of, you know, a guy who wants to win, who who can set a foundation, recruit well, just be a a guy that the program can love and be in support. I think that's what you know. Summerall did what Neil did. Uh, it's not what Chip, what, what Chip Lindsay did. I'm gonna keep throwing shade at him because I can't stand him. He's the worst coach I've ever seen coach on football field at Troy. Um, but yeah, I, I think he, he's gonna he'll do good things. Obviously, he'll bring in his recruiting classes in the next few years. He's already got a pretty solid transfer class coming in, and his recruiting class was solid. Man, he he brought in a ton of guys. He was the best yeah. in the Sun Belt. He was the number one class in the Sun Belt. And that's the first time. And what we, was that nationally? That. Like eighty? Probably. Super yes, super. it was eighty eighth in the country. <laughs> you know what? But hey, I'll tell you one thing. It, it's, it's it's not who they got. It's how many they got because they brought in a ton of people. <laughs> I think they brought they in like twenty nine. They, they have thirty high school signees. Oh, and wow. nine yeah. transfers. I'll say this: the past two years, well, summer he has brought in some good recruits, but he's brought in a lot more transfers than he did high school recruits. Now, a lot of these guys who are signed are some guys, and they still save the program, which is shocking enough. But we did, Troy did lose a lot in the transfer portal to other programs, to Lane, and obviously the number one receiver to Texas AM. and so, Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Jermaine mm. Barber. <coughs> it hurts. He was one yard away from 1,000 yards. He finished with 999 receiving yards. <laughs> R.I.P. I don't know what that was. I'm going to say C because they hired him, and I said, who? I'm going to go B+. Plus. Keep going. Go. Keep it rolling. Why did I get kicked uh, out for that? No, no, no. We weren't, we're, not, we're not doing it. It's the best recruiting class in school history. Like, that's all I'm going to say. And that guy has got to mean something. Jed Fish, Washington. Um, good hire. It's a good hire. It's a B. B. I'm not. I have nothing to say about it. I want to move through B it. Plus. We'll, 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 we'll have to say something B plus. We'll I think he. This. I think he did a, a an absolute masterclass of a job at Arizona, bringing them back from the grave that Kevin Sumlin tried to put them in. Uh, made them relevant. Made them fun to watch. Um, and Washington again. You think about their their situation. You know. Kalen DeBoer leaves to be able to go get this guy, Jed Fish. I think that's really, really good hire. Uh, we're going to learn a lot about Jed Fish now in his second job um, as a head coach. Yeah. I think, like I said, well, I agree with you. I think Jed Fish is a great hire. Obviously, what his tenure at Arizona and what he did, especially last year, man, he killed it. And I think Washington went and got the guy they needed to get to fill in the shoes of Kalen DeBoer. Ken says, I hate it because I want Arizona to be actually be good. Yeah, it's kind of sad. I thought they had some great yeah. momentum coming into 20. We're not going to talk much about him, but Brent Brennan, that was at San Jose State a lot. Uh, a lot of recruiting ties Almost to California. Almost got a job the first time around. Yeah, he did. A lot of recruiting mm-hmm. ties to, to California, so they can probably keep the talent there. Don't know how good they'll be in the Big 12. But the last one, just a, a F, the lowest grade you can go, F minus. It, can you go lower than an fail. F minus? Just fail out of the college. Fail out. Just fail completely. 
I mean, how unserious do you have to be about your your program to go to go out and get Bill O'Brien? <laughs> Kalen DeBoer fired him, and if he didn't, if Nick Saban was still there, Nick Saban was going to fire him. Congratulations, Georgia Tech. Congratulations, you you won't be last because it's going to be Boston College. Congratulations, Bryce. Who, who are you going to say here? I just – I was reading about this. This is an actual sentence put together by an actual national college football writer who is pretty, pretty prominent. Quote, the man did coach Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, and Bryce Young, comma, after all. What did he do to get any of them onto his team? Boston this, College does not have a nothing. Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, nothing. or a Bryce. Young. I will say this. The one upside is the expectations are not going to be high at Boston College. Yeah, like, that's the thing. But I okay. really like Jeff Halfley. Like, I, he was a and, – and he got run out of college football, and he pretty much publicly said why he got run out of college football because he was tired of it. I, people are grading this, guys. When you look across, like, A minus, B plus. Like, I'll go – Ooh, C plus B minus might be generous because I think there's going to be a level of play, like a level of professionalism that he's going to be able to have with the program. Whoa, 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 whoa! How? What happened to the Houston Texans when he got control of that roster? He gutted it. He had a playoff team and gutted it and ruined it and and basically kicked people off the team. Kicked DeAndre Hopkins basically off the team. Trade him to Arizona for nothing. Professionalism? No, not not. Not, nothing he did, nothing he's done, especially with Houston, Texas, screams, screams professionalism. And what happened with the Patriots? Guy ruined Mac Jones. Well, he didn't ruin him. Bill Bell. Oh, okay, fair, fair. But I, he didn't do much this past year to help him. He's just – it's the most like – like what is the most average – like when you, none of our moms are watching. I hate this. this. I, don't think. I hate this. I hate this so much. When you came home, <laughs> my mom. is your mom watching? Well, your mom doesn't make bad food, so there, that you're not even have to worry about that. Yeah, are you you saying your, your mom makes bad food? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's been the <laughs> occasions. There was a couple times. My dad would even say that. Um, there was this one dish she made that literally he said smelled like homelessness or something like that. I don't know what it was. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> This is like the most just like you come home and there's food on the table and it's just like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> like Bill O'Brien being hired by Boston College went along the bottom ticker like on ESPN or whatever. And we're just like, Yikes. I mean, uh, I, I'm no, not going to go as far as you said, Will. I, I don't think it's I, Will's passionate. I just don't think it's that serious. Like I just Boston College is not a serious place for football. Bill O'Brien is not serious. Um, he got bailed out with his lack of creativity at Alabama with a really really good quarterback. And like Tech fans, will atone to this. I don't think he used Jameer Gibbs the way that he could have been used at Alabama. Uh, that's that's it's you know it's it's ridiculous. I just think, honest to God. This is just like the most like eh, higher of the offseason. It's like, okay, you didn't move the needle. Like you're supposed to move the needle and they didn't move the needle. And they went for a name. I think they went for a name. Mm. Like, oh, the Patriots are firing their offensive coordinator. He's right down the road. He doesn't even have to move. Let's get him. He'll take the job. It's like they didn't do a search. I feel like one or two people were in the decision room and they're just like scrolling on Twitter to see maybe who's available and like what people are saying. Like, oh, Bill Bryan's available? Oh, yeah, let's just call him. Like, I don't feel like I would be astonished if they conducted a national search for this job. I would be blown away. There's no chance they did. There's zero chance. Rep said a bingo ball roller. All right, what we got coming here? Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien. Okay. Everyone, but the problem no in that one, Ralph no was is there were a hundred little ping pong balls higher. in there. There were a hundred ping pong balls and ninety nine of them had Bill O'Brien on it. Ninety nine no, of them said B O B. Okay. Wait, I, I hate to interrupt and talk about the NBA, but 
I don't think y'all saw any scores, but the Hawks came back and beat the Celtics tonight. I think they were down 30 or 40 at halftime. I'm going to check. Nobody cares. That's just wild. (laughs) Bill is the guy turning the roller at the retirement community. Exactly, Ken. Look, I'll tell you this right now. They they rolled it. They yelled Bill O'Brien, and no one yelled bingo because they know it wasn't a good hire. (laughs) It's just look. It's 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 a C minus to a D minus hire. I think the C minus is he might bring somebody in who wants to play for a coach who coached in the NFL. That might be the only reason. Because tell mm. me, you know what? Wait, 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 wait. No, he's on the list. We we skipped over him, didn't we? No, he's not on the list. Okay, um. see, this is the thing. Ken says I still think Bill was way better than you give credit for that program. I mean, like for Boston College, sure. It's just like. I think Jeff Hatley was the best coach they've had in a long time, and they decided, and he had to get rain out of college football for people to realize that, you know, it's going in a different direction than he wanted to, that he he expected to be. I don't think Bill O'Brien's going to be better than Hatley there. Steve Adazio was good. Just guys being dudes. I think, look, and that's it. I'm looking at their schedule this year. For, uh, Tom Boston Coughlin College. wasn't bad in 91. Are you really going back that far? Tom no, I don't care. Um, okay, he's took himself out. I had to leave for that. Tom Coughlin, um, really? Are we serious? Boston College goes to Missouri. We can't be. Year. We're talking about Boston I'll College. I'll be honest with you. I'm amazed we that can't. over 100 people are watching this show because I could, I mean, I've bored myself sitting here talking about Bill O'Brien for the past like two and a half minutes. Right, well, I think it's a bad you. hire. Let's go to the one. Let's get to the clickbait. Let's get to the rock dwellers. All right, here we go. Final one. We'll lay it on them. The man. No, 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 no. The final hire. We I think we skipped it. Nope. I didn't I didn't make it better. That one? No. Let's let's just have the conversation. Make it real quick. Hurry. Go. 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 Can't type. Gosh, I think I'll spell it wrong. There you go. Del McGee, Georgia State. Uh, get plus. ready for the Twitter pitchforks to get ready and get after you. Here we go. I think this is an A hire for, for Georgia State. I think what he has in the lack of coordinator experience, he makes up with the lack of just he's he knows ball. And he just knows it. And he knows what it takes to win. He knows what it takes to build a program. He knows the state inside out better than any person on any staff inside this state, whether it is NAIA, whether we're talking about Point University or we're talking about the the, the class act of this state right now in UGA. This guy knows ball. He knows everything there is to know. Referencing unserious institutions. It's A. It's it's a great hire. A plus. A A plus plus. plus. We're, we're the only ones who are going to say plus because people just, who are rock dwellers. No, 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 no. There's a lot of rock dwellers amongst other fan bases that just. Uh, this uh, they is don't know renowned. how big this is. This, this, they don't understand. Rena- when you get outside the sphere of that, of the certain fan base, these people realize how big of a hire this is. Like, this is a great the, hire for Georgia State. The Georgia fans that I know who are big, and a few of them are really big fans of Del McGee and what he's done there, they, they love that he got this job. Because he deserved it for one. I think, yeah, I think and they're happy he didn't he didn't get the Auburn job. They're happy he they, he got this job. They're happy the Auburn he, job. he didn't go somewhere where they got to face him every year. That's just the truth. Because he he will out recruit so, so on, on some of these guys. There there's gonna be some there's gonna be some three or four star running back. I didn't say it. I'm not. Can you might want to you might want to close your DMs. Yeah, you want. I'm just just make saying. Twitter private. You might want to close private. them. <laughs> Because it's about to be like Josh Brown. I got, I got harassed. Night. I mean, I got, ooh, I got crucified but on Twitter for that. He's not gonna. When we say out recruit, we're saying he will, he will go get three and four star running backs or you know players that that know they won't make a difference in a big power five school. Now they might, when they, they want to play. Keep going, just. If, Keep if going. You wanna, if you want to play and you actually have a chance to make a difference in college football and actually for your for your program, your team, you might want to go play for W. 
Honestly, that's just true. I think Del McGee is a great hire. I think he's going to do great things at Georgia State. Uh, are we saying they're going to beat everyone on their schedule? Absolutely not. But he will do some good things at Georgia State. I think, you know, and one day when he when he's successful there and moves on, people will realize we were wrong about Del McGee. This is the thing. Understanding the pull that this guy has, his knowledge of how to get people to the next level. Like it's the the rock dweller just says, Well, it's because he's at Georgia and he was at Georgia and everyone in Georgia recruits itself and and they just they get they get into this tizzy to where they don't even understand what they're talking about. This guy came from a class act program. This guy is a guy who has been sought after um to to literally be elsewhere for a long time. And Georgia has just continued. And he was just fine with it. They've continued. He's like the high, he's the highest paid running backs coach in the country. He's the highest paid non-coordinator in the country. This guy is a real in the day and age where relationships are going to matter more than ever for the group of five level, he can turn Georgia State into a top five group of five program. He can turn them into the class of the Sun Belt. Yeah. That's what we are sitting here saying. Do not misunderstand and say that this team's going to win 10 of the next 12 national championships because that's what you get your pitchforks and your Twitter fingers ready to sit there and say. I'm not even, and, and, and let me get set the record straight. Nobody on this show sat here and said that they were going to turn around and beat Georgia Tech this fall. No one said that. Absolutely no. nobody said that. In the long run, no matter what you think I said, I did not say that. Yeah. <laughs> Ralph's showing us off for the, the home field. This is a really, really good hire. And, and Del McGee is the head coach at Georgia State. It's going to have a nice pull. It's going to have a nice um, – it, man, it just works. And I'm going to tell you this, too. He is going to win some battles against other programs, and he's going to be a thorn in the side of, of Georgia Tech and Georgia when it comes to recruiting. Yeah, We're not saying he's going to land the number 12 class in the country. We're saying he is going to be the thorn in the side for a lot of these programs, and he's going to cre- – I'll say this. He is going to create a pathway to better opportunities or the NFL at Georgia State. And you could yeah. argue that's already been created. But they are going to either become the ultimate feeder program, which is not a bad de- deal for a group of five program as we move into this new college football. Like, I think Georgia State is going to be able to get kids from the state, get kids from the southeast. Maybe they're not getting the SEC offer. Georgia State's going to be the place to go. They're going to stop going to App State. They're going to stop going to Coastal. They're going to stop going to Georgia Southern. They're going to stop going to other places because it's like, hey, at the very least, I'm going to put in one or two years here, and I'm going to find myself at a Louisville. Jamari Thrash, fantastic example of that. Or I'm going to I'm gonna ball out here and I'm going to get Carroll. to the league. Right, Marcus Carroll at Missouri. I mean, literally, guy, I, I just – they could not have went out and got a better candidate. This For, for them, this is an A-plus hire. This is the best hire on this list for what it is or who it is. Ooh. Yeah, that's no, not yeah. a bad take. I mean, because – Some role to Tulane is really, really dang good, though. I will yes, say this. I, I agree. But for where, where they, who they had – and what the program was was going to be like after losing that coach, this was the best one you could get. Because after I mean, Sean, the way Sean that, Elliott did a great job at Georgia State, but I, Sean Elliott had one foot in South Carolina the whole time. Agreed, literally. But when he le- when he left, the the the, fa- the future of the program was was dwindling because they had no idea who they were going to hire at first. And you could say they could have hired some in- inside guy. They could have gone, you know, and got some. You know, very small FCS coach. But they went and got a splash with Dale McGee and, and convinced him finally to take a head coaching job. And he did it. And it's a great hire. I think it's a great job. I mean, we've, we've talked about his recruiting. And, and Bryce, I don't know if you've said it on the show. And I hope to, to not put you in a bind here. But you've heard some things. And, and, and you're more plugged in in recruiting than, than either of us are for sure. Dale McGee has a lot more respect from high school coaches than in, in the state of Georgia than a lot of that coaching staff across the street at Georgia Tech. And that means a lot because he's not going to take stuff away from – take players away from Georgia. He's going to take them from Georgia Tech and Georgia Southern. <clears throat> and, I mean, yeah, if you don't know about Dale McGee, guys uh, – chosen not was to know. 
Really, really, really good high school coach. Won a state championship at Carver down here in Columbus. So at least in this part of the state, he's he's a high school coaching legend. Played at Auburn. I mean, the guy's got the track record. He's got the track record, and and he I think we been all a agree. Head coach a long time ago. Yeah, I think we all agree that there's. The bag with that one. It's it's hard to see this guy not be successful at Georgia We're State and as a head coach. You. This is not so saying that they're going to go 12 and 0 and win. They're not going to go 12 and 0 next year. No, they're not. They're gonna not. Go 12 and 0 and they're going to lose games. They're going to lose games. Well, you don't game. have to go 12 and News flash, you don't have to win a national title to be a good football coach. No, I mean, if this may, guy, if he, if they go six and seven, if he keeps them in a bowl game, because that's where Sean Elliott had him. If he has them in a bowl game and they have the top recruiting class in the Sun Belt. Uh, that's a win. They're happy with a that. A huge Georgia win. State's, Georgia State's not the, the one year they go, you know, 10 and two and win the Sun Belt. And then Del McGee takes the, the power five job. He's been, you know, we've all thought he could take. I think Georgia State will sit back and say, we just did the greatest coach. Tell you what. Of all time. If, 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 if things fall the way they fall, he might be getting that dream job this December in nine months. I'm just going to say it. Would you I'm, stop? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm putting it out there. <laughs> you mentioned, Will, you're not putting me in a bind with this. You mentioned just okay. like the recruiting aspect of stuff. The amount of coaches that hit up Dale McGee's phone to come, want to come coach at Georgia State was astounding. The amount of coaches that had the opportunity uh, to be there, that wanted to be there, is good. There are three coaches on Tech's current 10-person staff that were viewed as to be options potentially for a, a role with him. I, I'm going to say this. I, I don't even care. I'm not even going to compare it to Georgia Tech because it's not It's not worth it. I don't, I don't care to get into a conversation. I don't care to get in some senseless debate about that. Uh, Georgia Tech's going to be Georgia Tech. Georgia State's going to be Georgia State. Georgia State's going to win some recruiting battles. They're going to be a thorn in the side, like I said, of both Tech and UGA, and it's going to be crazy. I'll tell you this right now. When you go to these camps, when you go to high schools, when you go to spring balls at high, at high school, and you, you ask around, you look around, Del McGee is revered in this state. As a guy who understands it, who gets it, knows the ins and outs of it. And in today's day and age, talent accumulation is a part of being a head coach. It's arguably more a part of it in the CEO type than it is just to be on the field X's and O's guys. That's really what you got to have elite coordinators for. If you really want to be a national title team, you got to have elite coordinators. Dell McGee is elite in talent accumulation. Now, he was at Georgia. Now, the common argument is, and I'm just going to tell you, we're not going to get to the second portion of the show. We're, we're going to do it another time because I, this is really, really important to say, and we're going to clip this because I think this is great stuff. The argument is going to be against Dale McGee is going to be straight up what Georgia recruits itself, which is the most baseless, lazy argument I have ever heard in my entire life. Seven, eight, nine years ago, Georgia was not doing what they did now. 10, 15, 17 years ago, Alabama was not doing it what it is right now. You have to have a culture. You have to have a head coach. You have to have something set forth that brings together to create that. These things just don't pop up out of thin air. I'm not saying that Georgia State is going to be able to be haul in consistent top 30 recruiting classes. What I'm telling you is I think their evals are going to be a, well, some of the best evaluations and thorough evaluations in the country. The way that they're going to have to do it, and he understands that they have to do it, he understands where he is. He knows this is not Athens anymore. He knows this isn't Alabama. He knows it's not Auburn. Well, he knows there's not going to be the natural pool. And I'm going to say this for people watching that are lurking in the comments, because we know there are people lurking in the comments that are not commenting. We can see the viewer count. He's going to get guys onto that campus that maybe are never really seriously going to go there, but have a respect level for him. And if you make fun of that, I'm going to quickly remind a fan base that's sitting over there, you know, off near Bobby Dodd that might be making fun of that. I'm going to remind you of a respect factor that Dylan Riola had for Buster Faulkner and paid him a spring visit last year. Faulkner is, is great coach, and that's awesome. Jante Gilbert, a guy that Tech's battling for, a guy that a lot of teams are battling for, was once an Ohio State commit, now considered a Clemson lean. He was on campus. T.K. Cunningham, a kid who is absolutely phenomenal, class of 2027 20, young man, phenomenal. He is going to build these relationships early. He is going to be in these schools. He understands the seven-on-seven seven scene, the relationships. And I don't play this a lot, 
and I don't think this is playing it too. Having a successful African American head coach in Atlanta is going to do crazy things yeah. for this. And this isn't posturing. This isn't. This isn't. This isn't virtue signaling. This is straight up. This guy's. This guy is is revered. He's respected, and it's going to do some things for that program. So within think- the scope of what Ralph said. I still feel like for what they what they needed in the fit, I, I, John Summerall is my best hire of the offseason. But Dell McGee is daggum really close because he yeah. fits he fits what they need. He is a great football coach, regardless of, of skin color. But man, he he is. I, I like this. Like I seriously like this. And I think the people who are just scoffing at it, you really truly don't understand getting inside these high schools in these camps. The, the pull that this guy has, not because of the Georgia G. Like, that's just been a cherry on top for the past however many seasons he's been on with Kirby. Th- there's way more to that than just the Wikipedia page. I, I just wanted to make yeah. one comment. If you don't believe what we're saying about how great a recruiter he is, 247 Sports has a page where you can go look at recruiter rankings. You can go look at Del McGee's. The five stars he's pulled in, talking about some of the best players that's ever touched the field for Georgia in the last few years. It's crazy. He's the main reason they're there. In the top it's one not on there, just he, running backs. No, in the top one on there, he didn't play very long at Georgia. It was Justin Fields. Now, I know he wasn't there long in Georgia. Got him to flip from Penn State. Got him to flip from – where he was a guaranteed starter at Penn State when he got there. Yeah. Flipped them to Georgia. Michael Williams, Amir White. I mean – did y'all about some of the guy DeAndre Swift? Obviously, it was a running back, but still, I mean, Jamari saw I'm, I'm going to I'm going to butcher his name. Smile, Smile Monday. Yeah, a linebacker, opposite side of the ball. He can recruit any position out there. He got Jake Kamara to come to Georgia. Okay, and anywhere punter. too. That's a punter. Yep. He got a punter to come to Georgia. <clears throat> He's a running backs coach. You know, when we talk about fit, I think. <sighs> I know y'all well enough to speak for all of us. When we talk about fit, it's everything. It's everything about the guy. You know, yeah. not to not to get political as we like to say, but it's everything. It's everything. And I don't I agree with you, Bryce. I don't think at surface level, I don't think it has much to do with it. But I mean it it it's gonna it's gonna have an impact. Where he is, who he don't, is. You know, don't be afraid Everything to say it. I mean, I'll just interrupt you right here. Literally had a conversation with someone who's high up in the minority coaches association, like in in the state of Georgia. When when we were 365 or how many days ago it was, and they they were trying Georgia Tech was trying to figure out how his head coach was. There were multiple power players at Georgia Tech that wanted him, and the multiple power players, the minority coach says that said, This is going to play well. It doesn't even have to be a PR stunt, though, because this guy's a good football coach. Right. Like this that, isn't a that, PR stunt. That's my whole point. It that that has nothing to do with it because he's a really good coach. But that's it's like you said about the the Georgia G kind of cherry on top. I mean, it's just like a helpful tool. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> is what it is. He doesn't need much help, but he 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 had it there. Yeah, man, it's just uh, Josh Brown coming in late, dropping a nuke, <laughs> dropping a nuke. I mean. I don't know, man. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited, and I'll say this too. I really, really hope that for this. You know, this is just internal conversation. I really hope for the sake of you know you two guys, y'all are potentially able to kind of see this program up close and personal more this season, and we're able to kind of see what they do because I, I genuinely, genuinely believe this is a good hire. It, it's a solid hire. Yeah. We don't, and you don't even have to compare it to what else is going on in the state. Like, I know there's been comparisons, and will you started that fire of of that type of comparison? on social media, but just within the scope of Georgia state, they could be a top five group of five team. They could, they just, no could doubt. Be. they just could be. There's, and it's there's, just, there's no doubt. Yeah. So I, I'm definitely going to be checking in on Georgia state a lot. And I never did. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Cause I know we're, we're really, we're 90 minutes into this thing. Um, and we're going to wrap it up here because one thing I have learned, and this is oh God, this might've become a Georgia state podcast at this point. Of of what it is, we we get we gotta bring Ben in though. If we're gonna do that, Ben Ben's good. Yeah, Ben's good stuff. He's oh, good we were friend. an SMU podcast. We're yeah. working on that. Definitely, an, the definitely an podcast. FAU, definitely an FAU up. podcast. Oh, yeah. We're here. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. 
I mean, the AirPod died. I got I got one in the other one. So, but he, here's here's kind of my thoughts. We're gonna wrap it up right here. Georgia's starting to recruit more nationally. If you really start to pay attention, now everyone's gonna come into this state and, and try to get what they want. But if Georgia State starts a crusade. If they really do that within the, the, the this border, they are gonna they're gonna they're gonna find some talent, and they're not they're not gonna be able to match the Ohio States, the Alabamas of the, that realm. But I feel comfortable in saying this: they're, they're gonna be able to compete with Georgia Tech in recruiting in this yeah. state, and in some instances, in some specific situations, and I'm not gonna get into the particulars of it. They're gonna win those battles. There's a couple battles they would have won if Del McGee was there. Um, yep. I know they would have won, but it's uh, fun stuff. Not going to make fun. Good. I don't even know if we're doing Georgia Tech show tomorrow, but it wouldn't make fun for a good Georgia Tech show. I mean, people don't even watch anymore. But you know who does watch? People on Twitter. I mean, we appreciate it. Over 100 viewers live all night long. Full 90-minute show. No breaks, guys. Um, it'd almost be easier to do live TV at this point because you get like 17 different commercial breaks. We just powered through it. It will be phenomenal. Will Manis. My name is Bryce Coon. He's Ralph Flair. We appreciate you watching here on this episode of the Crowded Booth. We'll catch you next time. We will be talking more content all throughout the week, including coming up. Not going to spoil the name yet. Big time guest coming up here in the next 10 days on the show that is going to be massive. I mean, and I cannot wait. This is this is a good big one. I don't know that there's a word to describe how big it is. It's big. It's big. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to know when that episode drops, go over to YouTube, hit subscribe button. We'll catch you next time here on the on almost not so uh, uh, credit booth. Bye. See you. How in here and make yourself feel at home. The crowded booth is coming on. The crowded booth with Bryce Coons.